Greetings folks, Daniel Wickwire here and welcome back to Monster Bites, where we discuss various facts and trivia about kaiju and monsters in all forms of media. During 1991 in the United States, there wasn't much as far as giant monster video games. A few Godzilla games on the NES and Game Boy, Ultraman on the SNES, Rampage, and probably some other ones that I can't remember right now. Not many of them at that point were 1v1 wrestling style games. That was until the release of SNK's King of the Monsters. King of the Monsters was made by SNK in 1991 for the arcade and Neo Geo. It was later downgraded and ported to the 16-bit SNES, Sega Genesis, and various other consoles after that point. As I stated earlier, the game is a 1v1 wrestling slash fighting game. Your objective is to battle through 8 to 10 stages, depending on which version you're playing, of computer opponents, beating them by timeout or via pinfall. You had 4 to 6 characters to choose from, Geon, Wu, Astro Guy, Poison Ghost, Rocky, and Beetle Mania. The 16-bit versions have to make do without Wu and Poison Ghost, sadly. You have jumps, body slams, and projectiles, as you would expect. The arcade and Neo Geo versions are the best ones to get, with two-player co-op, better graphics and sound, plus the benefits we mentioned above. If not that one, the Sega Genesis version would likely be your next best bet. It's a fun game, a little bit dated at this point, but you should definitely give it a shot. One year later, SNK released a sequel titled King of the Monsters 2, The Next Thing, because who needs originality? However, this time they changed the format up a little bit, opting for a side-scrolling action beat-em-up while still retaining some of the wrestling elements. Instead of being in a wrestling-style ring, you actually progress through levels with power-ups and so on until you reach a boss monster at the end of the stage. Deplete its life, and you win. No more pinfalls. There is another co-op style mode, this time it was available on the SNES version as well. You get a slew of new monsters, some returning, others brand new. You have Super Geon, Cyber Wu, and Atomic Guy are playable characters, along with Huge Frogger, Eiffelite, Clawhead, Beetle Master, Aqua Slug, Lavacus, and Famarde as your villains. Unless you are playing the Genesis version that was ported by a completely different company and is heavily altered from its SNES and Neo Geo counterpart to the extent that it plays very differently from the original game, so no more side-scrolling stages, no more bosses at the end of the level, no more co-op, and no more Famarde. But all the normal boss characters are now selectable with their own custom moveset, plus they altered some of the movement a bit to make it more like a tournament fighter. My experience is solely with the SNES version of this game, but I've heard nothing but good things about all three, with the exception of the Neo Geo version being brutally hard. The King of the Monsters series has laid dormant since 1992, with the occasional cameo and reference sprinkled throughout a few newer SNK titles. Maybe with the advent of all these newer kaiju films and video games, hopefully, hopefully, we will see another entry in the franchise, but with almost nothing in the past 25 years, it doesn't really look promising. You can still, however, enjoy the original two titles with digital versions floating about on either virtual console, compilation discs, or emulation. What do you guys think of King of the Monsters? Have you ever played them before? If not, do you plan to? Leave your comments below and maybe a suggestion of what you'd like to see in the next video. Don't forget to check out the KMR Facebook page, Twitter account, and my Twitter account as well to keep up with news on this channel. I'll put links in the description below. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will be back in two weeks with a new episode. Take care.